Liberty, would you take just a few seconds to introduce yourself and um, Beamline uh, Diagnostics and your role there? Yeah. Um, so I'm, my name is Dr. Liberty Foreman. I did a PhD at UCL um, in the technology behind the company. Um, so it was during that uh, four year period of my PhD that I decided actually we have something really special here and if I leave it, if I leave the PhD, don't continue it, don't continue something about it, it's going to be sat there on a shelf doing nothing. So I decided to set up a company and see if we could take it further. Um, so I did that, I became the CEO, I'm the co-founder, um, that's where, during my PhD, that's where I met Katie uh, Willits, who is uh, my partner, the business partner, um, and we started off with a few, well, we managed to blag 40 grand off my, <laughs> off my dad, <laughs> set up the company, uh, did a few business plan competitions, and then so far we've raised 2.7 million uh, pounds um, towards the project. Wow, that's very unusual that you go straight from your doctorate into owning your own company. So I'm assuming that finding your partner was part of that confidence to build that team or did you know you need to do this and you went and found the right partner? So we'd worked together for about four years. We were in the same lab and we have our personalities like chalk and cheese and I think that's one of the best things that you can do when you find a business partner. I I'm super optimistic and I really want it. And my passion drives everything. And then she just inserts loads of realism and makes sure that I don't go too far too quickly. So she keeps you grounded and yeah. you keep her in the air. Yeah. That is perfect. No, it is. It's really perfect. And actually, we've been complimented a lot on our relationship um, and how we run the business. Let's take a step back before your PhD. Mm -hmm. You said that you t had your PhD in technology. So did you have an interest in technology at a young age? Or was there a specific event that made you go into technology? Um, so originally, I'd started doing biochemistry or molecular genetics at university. And I realized that I was terrible in the lab. I, I used to smash glassware. It used to go everywhere. In fact, one of my supervisors told me that I wasn't allowed to use glass anymore. I had to use the plastic stuff. So I realized I wasn't very good at lab, and I was much better at the computational side. Um, so I took it on myself to apply for PhDs that had the ability for me to translate my skill set into the computational side. So that's when I went on this Wellcome Trust program at UCL, which enabled you to do three three-months rotations so that you could test out some various different um, projects before you selected the one that you wanted to do a PhD in. Um, and then uh, two of my rotations, two of these three-months rotations, were incredibly scientific and really, well, I, in my opinion, boring, because you're looking at something so small that never has an impact. And then when I worked on this one to do with infrared and clinical application, I got to go over to the hospital, I got to meet patients. It was, it was really amazing to have that array of different skills thrown at you um, and challenges. Katie was also interested in the same project. We were on the same program, of a PhD program. And she's a lot more biochemical and technical than me. So we arranged it so that she would have more technical part aspects of the job, of, of the PhD, and I would have more analytical and then that's how the kind of project started. And then that was really the basis of the company too. Major kudos for customizing your own, not just education, but your own future. Was there anybody that you looked to in your early career or even before that for inspiration? Maybe your dad or someone else? My dad ran his own business and I wanted to always run mine. I think it's probably the biggest inspiration. And plus, I actually struggled a lot at school so it was a miracle that I even went to university. I was nearly put down a year, and I think I just wanted to prove everyone wrong, I guess. Big, big part of it is that. Win. <laughs> I love that. So we've talked a little bit about the story behind Beamline, how you got together with your partner, but at what point did you realize specifically, we have something here? I remember coming back from one meeting, uh, which was between a supervisor, clinical, clinical supervisor on the project and my biophysical supervisor on the project. And they were quite amazed with the results. And the original, uh, the original um, disease that we were studying is actually quite a small market. Um, 
But I thought, well, if I can prove this, then maybe there is something there. And they tried to convince me to stay on for a postdoc. And I just, no, I, I'm not, I, wouldn't, I couldn't stay in that scientific environment. So it was at that point that I thought, well, if they want me to stay for a postdoc, maybe I can just make a company instead. So I think I came back from that meeting. It was about 6 p.m. And I remember going back to the lab and then saying, Katie, let's start a company. And then that was it. That, that evening, I put together some notes. And the next day, I started doing it. <laughs> what was Katie's reaction? Uh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> she must have trusted me, because otherwise she wouldn't have done it. But she, she was a little bit worried at first that we wouldn't be able to find the money um, because obviously, we, otherwise we'd have to get jobs afterwards. And I said, oh, well, I'll prove we can get, if we can get some money before we have to get a job, do, will you do it? And she said, yeah, sure, no problem. Well, what have we got to lose? We're young, we don't have families. And you know, the only thing that can happen is to gain transferable skills, to gain experience. So it's a win-win, it's really, isn't it? So even if it doesn't work, uh, which, which it will, um, but even if it doesn't, we're going to be extremely hireable, so. Absolutely, and some would argue that putting yourself into the deep end is the best way to learn. Yeah. Excellent. So now you have, a, you have the yes from Katie. What was your number one priority when building the team, or the rest of the team? <laughs> you know, when you first start a company, everyone always says team, 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 and it's true. And we went through Oh, two people, two or three people before we found like the, the next big hire. So uh, the biggest hire that we've got right now is our CTO. Um, he's started full time like a couple of months ago. Um, originally, it was going to be one of my friends, um, but other things came up and he couldn't do it. But uh, it was all about the fit. The, the, the fit of the person in the team, which is why originally we went friends, maybe that's a good idea, but probably in hindsight it's, it's better that we found an external person. But we were always really worried that we wouldn't be able to sit in the office and have the same conversations that we have between us as founders. Um, so I think when we were interviewing, definitely the most important thing was that they fit well in the team. So they could joke with us in the office, we could have a good time. It was almost, it, it, I wouldn't say that their technical ability was second. It's just that a lot of people have technical ability. But if you can't socialize well, and if you can't fit in well with the team that you're with, you're not going to get the best out of that person anyway. Um, so I think that was the most important thing. So then what has been your most surprising aspect of this journey? Probably the way that we get treated when we go to um, conferences and things. So we, I mean, being female, there is a lot, I mean, especially right now, it's a very trendy topic to talk about on uh, females in business and things. And I actually find it really irritating <laughs> because I want to be, I want to be good and I want to be successful because I have a good product and because we all make it work not because I'm a woman. And sometimes I feel a little bit like we're, we go to an event or we go to something and people give us a leg up because we're women and I, I, I don't want it. I want, I want to compete with everyone else. I don't want to have a special competition just for me um, or just for women. But having said that, sometimes we do get um, a little bit of stigma, I guess. I understand that. I mean, we're all members of the same community. We don't need to be tokens. Yeah, well, exactly. I actually think the women find it, it's, they find it worse to, to be singled out like that. I couldn't agree more. But we do have um, investors that invest in female founders. <laughs> well, we'll take it when we can get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so looking ahead, what are your 2018 priorities? Um, so considering that our biggest milestone this year was that we set up a 400 patient clinical study at four sites. Our next milestone is to get the data from them, to analyze it and to publish those results and not academically publish it, but publish it to our investors. Um, and then to set up the 1000 patient study. What are you looking for in a strategic partner? It's a couple of things. So the first thing is that we will be at we're ready for acquisition in about three years, two, three years. So I think I would like to learn from uh, from a partner how 
to manage that acquisition process, how to get my company ready for an acquisition process and mentored in a way that I can make that successful. Um, and also a lot, because this is an American program, often when we go over to the States, we're seen a little bit as reserved, I think, Brits. <laughs> and I want to be able to find that balance between being visionary, but also being realistic. Because so far, I don't think I've managed to get that across, and I really want to nail it. So yeah, probably that too. I have no doubt in my mind that it's <laughs> just days away, not even Hopefully. years away. And, and if, if there's, there's bonus, bonus funding, funding in it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Liberty, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you.